My lovely, lovely imps. Today, we are doing something very, very special together. Now, if you have never seen any of my holy mackerel content, if I say the word holy mackerel and you go, holy cow. Actually, that's a really good response for that. You should go right now to my channel and search on my channel, Holy Mackerel. There's a playlist. Watch it, okay? I promise you, you are going to love this, okay? Holy Mackerel is a Christian, extremely niche comedy show that we discovered together. And to my knowledge, basically, as far as I can tell, our channel and people associated or friends of my channel are basically the only people who have ever publicly reacted to or watched or talked about this show in any way. And it is a work of art, okay? It is amazing. It is so bad it's good, so good it's bad again, and then so bad again that it's so good again. It is one of the most wonderful things that we've ever discovered in the entire history of this channel. We unironically love and hate and also love hate and also just love, but no just hate. Um, I did say just hate. We don't really hate it. We just like love hate sometimes because sometimes it gets a little funny. But regardless, the point is, it doesn't matter. The point is that we all believe in the way of the mackerel, okay? Through this long journey, Nine seasons of Holy Mackerel we have followed together. Over the course of years, in real time, we have watched artistic history unfold. We've watched hilarious Christian jokes. We've watched offensive Christian jokes. We've watched strange and imperceptible, impossible to unpuzzle Christian jokes, and we've done it together. We've made our own jokes. I've dressed up as Holy Mackerel. I've dressed up as Holy Cow. I've don't have the loan shark, but I've done the loan shark voice. We have added our own magic to the holy mackerel world. And tonight, we are going to watch what might be the last four episodes of holy mackerel ever made. Okay? And we are going to laugh. We are going to cry. We are going to tear our clothes and smear ash on our faces and wail to the skies and pray to all of our gods and anti-gods and no gods and whatever else. We're going to do all of it because life is fleeting and even more so is the life of a mackerel. You see, we don't actually know if there's going to be holy mackerel this year. Every year during Lent, a new pack of Holy Mackerel videos is released. But the extremely questionable organization uh, that employs the people who make Holy Mackerel, I don't want to even say that they make Holy Mackerel because Holy Mackerel is a side project that is hosted by a Catholic cult, but that isn't... Like, it isn't, like, made an official product of them. They don't, like, fund it, as far as I can tell. It's just, like, the, the production team that makes videos for this Catholic cult also does Holy Mackerel, and they host it on the website. But the point is, they're going under. Like, bad. Um, the group is known as Church Militant. And, uh... As is to be under, as is to be expected, uh, they have had a massive internal controversy. The founder and leader of the cult, and the also the second in hand um, of their like main production line, all of their shows, they both have left the cult. Um, one in disgrace after being exposed for complete and utter hypocrisy in his views. He's a anti-homosexualist, is what he calls himself. A former homosexualist, but he's not former anymore because he's an active homosexualist now. And uh, anyway, it's blown up. And from what I can tell, it's not coming back. 
like they're still posting articles on the website, but their shows are not like we can just go to their YouTube channel right now. And in fact, we will. Let's just go check their YouTube channel and let's see how their videos are doing. Um, I want to see. I want to see how well they've been doing lately. Okay. Yikes. So they have 319,000 subscribers. Okay. That's a lot of subscribers. Uh, 2.5 thousand views, 3.4 thousand views, 1.9 thousand views, 1.4 thousand views, 872 views. Their highest, 828 views. Their highest in the last week is a video that got 7,000 views, okay? Now, I have one-tenth of their subscribers, and that is like... 2.3 thousand views is like what one of my videos will do with one-tenth of their subscribers, okay? And none of these, of course, are featuring any of the people that, uh, that, that, that used to lead their show. And as you can see, some of them, decoding the gender debate, leftist myths and confusion, the download. This used to be one of their primary uh, shows and it's got 700 views in t in 11 days. They're struggling, okay? They're struggling, like a lot. They're really struggling. And also, I want just I wanted to show you. By the way, they cap out, so it's not like they're getting more views over time. This one surprisingly did do pretty good. Three weeks ago, 21,000 views. But if you look at most of their views, these are from three weeks ago: 7,000, 4,000, 6,000. 2,000 three weeks ago, 2,000. So, you know, not to be like a view policer or anything like that, but let's just be real. Their videos are struggling. Their new team is severely struggling to keep the attention going on. And we know for a fact that they lost major donors because that was central to the drama. Now, all of that is kind of aside from the point. The real point is the holy macro our beloved boy, who we are going to laugh with and have a wonderful time with, okay? We're going to have a great time with this. Now, there's one last thing I need to say before we jump right in, which is soon it is going to be Lent. Lent begins, I believe, on the 17th of this month. So, we might see whether or not Holy Mackerel is going to continue putting out episodes, whether or not they produced another season or not, it's possible that Holy Mac will, much like Jesus Christ, return from the dead smelling like a fish. But there's no guarantee. And if it doesn't, I have already said that I am going to be reaching out to the creators of the show with the hopes of perhaps securing the rights to the show, if for no other reason than to keep the legacy of Holy Mac going forward. Um, Holy Mac is near and dear to my heart. It's genuinely special to me, okay? Oh, it's the 14th. Sorry, I thought it was the 17th. It's the 14th. Sorry, I, I'm not Catholic. Surprise. Um, did their followers jump ship or are they being suppressed? Um, no, they, they jumped ship. They lost an incredible amount of support, um, because the cult leader was exposed as still gay, um, and also was, was exposed for, um, sending sects to donors. So, it, like, large money donors got offended and left the organization because they were receiving gay sects from the leader of the cult. Yeah, so... Um, you know, anyway, that's, that's the backstory. Okay. That's the backstory and all the reasons why we're going to be sitting down and enjoying ourselves tonight. And we have something very, very special. Okay. Because the first episode of tonight is luck. Oh, the mackerel, a, apparently a version of the hit 
Nickelodeon nine like late nineties, early two thousands movie Luck of the Irish. Weird choice, but let's do it, shall we? Shall we do it? Shall we do it? Hello and welcome to Green Top Report. I'm your host, Joseph McEnders, and sitting with me today is Church Militants, head of production, Charlie Hornbarker. Hello. I can't do an Irish accent, so instead I do Arnold. And Ronan Torrance, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still just Ronan Torrance, so. So today, we're going to be uh, reacting to the fish that has been roaming around Church Militant. He's got a, he's got a shillelagh? <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, John. You you could have meat today. It's St. Patrick's Day. If you're if you're Irish. Oh, hey, holy mackerel. I, I got some green broccoli in my meat here. It's St. Patrick's Day. I kind of do that every day of the year, you know? It's uh... I can't believe it. Nine seasons in, and we're still coming up with unique ways to destroy meat. Can you believe they haven't used a shillelagh yet? I can't. I can't believe it. You could have saved the broccoli! Based off of a Japanese panda bear that sold cheese. And he was angry if you didn't buy the right cheese and he'd like tip over your cart. So someone came up with the idea, hey, people trying to eat meat during uh, Lenten Fridays? Holy mackerel stops you. Holy mackerel just smacks the burger out of your hand. Holy shit. We're getting, we're getting background story of where the inspiration for holy mackerel came from. It came from the angry panda that attacks your cheese. That's incredible. You know, you can't have meat on Friday unless the Archdiocese gives you a dispensation. Brad, I'm Irish, okay? I don't need any sort of dispensation. Okay, you suit yourself. But thanks anyway. breaking the fucking button is broken and they're pushing it with a pencil cap no now to be fair these episodes are a bit old but that's a really bad sign they can't even get a new microwave in the break room oh no these poor guys <laughs> oh god I can't believe they didn't, they missed the opportunity to smash the bowl with the shillelagh. That would have been amazing. This is a return to classics though, I will say. This is like old, this is, this episode's a throwback. No, they've broken, they have broken plates before. They've mushed food all over the place. This is, this is like old school classic season one where it's just a dried out burger getting hit onto the ground or something getting dumped into the trash. You know, for the last few seasons, they're willing to make a mess. But I'm Irish. <laughs> Maybe they can't afford a new bowl, says Dilverin. <laughs> No! Oh no, you might be right. <laughs> yeah. Dan on the moon. That episode was just that, a classic. It's just wonderful. Just I mean, absolute classic. Each each step of the way in the episode, the holy mackerel 
catches him and stops him, and he just tries to one up the mackerel, and then at the end there, uh, just it's not called Dan on the Moon. That's that's so funny. Did he forget what the? It's called Philly Cheese Mistake. It's not called Dan on the Moon. Dan on the Moon is the podcast that uh, the podcast that 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 the guy makes on the Moon. Excuse me. Okay, this is um this right now is that time when Akira Toriyama, the creator of uh, Dragon Ball Z, was asked about um a character. Uh, I think her name was Launch, if I remember correctly. Hold on. Let me just make sure I've got the right character. Yeah, Launch. Um the character's name was um Launch and uh and Akira Toriyama got asked about it and was like, "Who?" And the fans were like, "You know, Launch." And he was like, "I don't know who you're talking about." And then they like had to show him a picture of the character and he goes, "Oh, yeah, I completely forgot I made and drew that character." He fooled himself. He can't eat can't eat a sandwich through a one giant helmet. slap. Whoa! Oh shit! Michael Voris in violation. Damn, this was telling the future. A crave case. Oh god! They were they were they were trying to tell us in advance. They were trying to tell us for mankind during <laughs> exactly. Alright, so if you're Irish. There you go, you can have some lovely White Castle here, as I imagine that. Or should we- Michael Voris being theatrical? Oh, he was definitely back on his bullshit. This must have been the week. This must have been the week that he was sending the gay sex to the, uh, to the, to the donors. He's like the most tightly wound guy ever. And he's dancing around in a green outfit with a fake Irish accent. You can't get more fruity than that. Oh, he's got pep in his step. Exactly, Windleby. Make it green, Castle. Here you go. Here you go. Thanks so much for coming on, Charlie. Now, before you go, we have something very, very special. Isn't that right, wow. Ronan? Oh, we do. Oh, we do. So, uh, I believe we're going to be... His name is Ronan? Why didn't I catch that at the beginning, that this guy's name was Ronan? That's a hell of a name. Eating. Ooh. Yes. Wow, what do... Okay. We have, uh, wings. Wings? Chicken wings. Anders, today's Friday, though. But it's St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's yeah, Day. Yeah, so so, what does that mean? We're, we're, like, we're, do you not see this? We're Irish. Do you not see this? I'm wearing the green. So I can oh. eat the meat. Oh, I'm a quarter Irish. That's right. If, you're, eat, Irish, no! if you're Irish, you're Irish. I'm 25%. How, many, how much are you? I'm, I don't know. I'm American, but. No, that boy's Irish, too. We're all that Irish, Irish, Irish too. Patty's Everybody's Day, right? Irish on St. Patrick's Day. There Come on, guys. guys. Let's do that. All right, let's do it. Let's eat, let's eat some wings. Okay, awesome. All right, very cool. Let's do it. All right. <gasps> oh, Ooh, look yeah. Look at that. Oh, mm. yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe I yeah, should uh, just grab one of those. Grab one of these. Yeah. Oh, this is this is excellent. Ronan. Ronan. Yeah, let me get one of those. Grab one of those wings. Yeah, yeah. yeah all right. Oh, we should do a cheers. Mm -hmm. We should do an Irish cheers. I can't yes. do an Irish accent, but um, an Irish cheer. To the entirety of the... Can't do an Arnold either. The Emerald Isle and the goodness of the Catholic faith. Let's eat. Oh no. So, uh, is he gone? 
Yeah. We we doing fish? We fi- fish. Yeah, fish. fish. We're fish. gonna do fish. We're gonna eat fish today. Yeah, let's let's do, let's. Let's stick to fish. I think yeah. we're gonna yeah. stick to fish. Yeah. Fish. Wow. But, oh, come on, come on, hold my map up. Look at me, I'm Irish. Can I, you're saying I can't have meat on St. Patrick's Day. So, we're orange. That means we can't have meat. But. Can I still have broccoli? Damn, I can't believe we got a classic. A classic episode. It's very simple. Although I will find, I do find it interesting that Holy Mackerel watching a podcast about how the creator of Holy Mackerel came up with, um, came up with the idea for Holy Mackerel. Isn't that kind of like if you watched a podcast about like how your parents conceived you? It feels a little, um, feels like it might be a little more awkward, or maybe he's just really into that. Maybe we learned something about Holy Mackerel today, you know? Right? Like, I mean, think about it. If you were sitting there watching a podcast and they were like, this is how you were made. And then they just went in great detail about, like, why your dad and mom got horny that night, you know? Kind of weird. But, hey, I liked that episode. It was a classic. He slapped some stuff. Nothing super fancy. Which is funny because the last few episodes have been... Wait a minute, we skipped an episode. Oh no, I made a small mistake. We actually skipped an episode. Uh, we forgot to watch The Dining. I made a small mistake. I didn't see this one here. For some reason, I thought, I thought this one was this one. The last episode we watched was The Midnight Zone, which was the tra- trans meat is real meat, a.k.a. trans women are real women. Um, episode. And we missed the dining. All right, let's do the dining. That's our next episode. We we made a small mistake. Let's do I it. I just think sci-fi is overrated as a genre. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think sci-fi is so geeky. I, and besides, I prefer fantasy anyway. Sci-fi is just not my thing. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, man. I hope this isn't another super villain. Oh, if it is, can I fight him? I haven't had a battle sequence yet. Oh! He's back from the moon! He's back from the fucking moon! I'm so happy we didn't skip this episode! Everybody, we need the K-Cosmonauts in chat! K-Cosmonauts now! Oh, it was just Dan, back from the moon. How are ya? How are ya? How are ya? How are ya? ya? I'm so hungry. It's been three years since I had a Philly cheesesteak with mustard. Oh, it's not broken. Oh shit, it broke after this. This episode, so we know that because the next episode is broken in the next episode, they mean, that means they broke it then. Do they break it in this episode? Like I said, it's been three years since I had a Philly cheesesteak while I was at the moon. No Philly cheesesteaks on the moon, you know. As Soon as I got back, figured out a way to come back here with those moon rocks, I ran right over to Vega Market, got myself a Philly cheesesteak. He looks way different. He looks way different. And that's what I'm gonna have. Cool story, bro. Yeah, cool story. You know, it's a really cool story how I convert those moon rocks to jet fuel power in order to get... Five seconds left. They really up-
upgraded their laser effect! Damn, that's an advanced laser effect! The old one looked like hell! That's great! Oh, come on, come on. I, I mean, I lost all track of time when I was on the moon. What are my chances of coming back on a Friday? One in seven. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow. I get some ideas. I'm gonna write a book about the time I was on the moon. It's gonna be great. Best seller, New York Times. Uh-oh. You know how I can get this portobello mushroom to taste like steak? Red rub. Get it? Red rub. Oh, it's the dining. I can remember when I was a little boy. My grandmother would use this seasoning and we'd enjoy steak without ever even knowing it was a mushroom. She called it dining. Well, yeah. I think anybody would call it that. Hey, what's that smell? It's making me hungry. Red rub. What? Red rub, red rub. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's, wait. Oh, this is just another pencil. So the pencil is just here randomly, and they move it over when the, when the microwave breaks, I guess. But this is the same pencil that they used to open the, the microwave. Also, this is a good bit. Red rub. Uh, I use it on my mushrooms to make it taste like steak. Ooh, ooh, mushrooms, ugh, I hate mushrooms. I'd rather starve than eat mushrooms. Ooh. Than eat mushrooms. Yeah, that, uh, that red rub. <laughs> hey, they caught the end of the line there. That's great. Rub does smell really good. How much does it cost? $2.37. Okay, hold on. We're, all, we're not even halfway through the episode. Okay, never mind. All right, they immediately start on another one. I, it would have been a power move to just have the episode called The Dining and just the red rub joke is the only thing that has anything to do whatsoever with The Shining. But he's on the typewriter now, so. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Get a lot written? Yes. Hey. If you don't want mushrooms, I have other veggies to hold you over. Uh, you, you want me to think about- Oh, there's a lot of, they're getting a lot of, they're picking up the previous line a lot in this episode. That's the second time. Listen to that again. Here, I'll turn it up a little bit. They, I've never noticed this in any other episode. Uh, you, you I have other veggies to hold you over. Uh, See? Did you hear that? You want me to think about? You want me to eat veggies when all I have in my mind is Philly cheesesteak? Don't be so grouchy. Do I look grouchy? I'm not grouchy. I'm just trying to finish my book and have a Philly cheesesteak at midnight. Okay, I understand. Maybe I'll come by later with a couple black bean burgers if you don't feel like veggies, and I can use the red rub to make it super tasty. Shane, Shane, let me explain something to you. Every time you interrupt me, I can't get my book done. I lose my concentration, and all I think about is Philly cheesesteak, and I can't have it till midnight. Whatever, bro. Don't let yourself go too crazy over cheesesteak, Dan. <sighs> Calliope says, wait, is that how scenes are filmed? They just react to recording from the previous scene? No, not usually. Um, but, I mean, it's not unheard of, but it, not usually, no. Um, I mean, it depends, on, it depends a lot on the... Um, on the performance, but, uh, and, and like on the production, I guess. Cause like, if you have a multi-camera production, you know, you're going to get different angles of the same scene, uh, with multiple cameras, you know? Um, but sometimes in these cases, especially if you don't have anybody actually memorizing the script, they might do something like that. In this case, they just keep catching the audio, which is a little bit funny. Crazy. You know what's crazy? Going crazy over mushrooms. That's what's crazy. Do anything for a Philly cheesesteak. Oh. 
Hey, holy cow! It's a slow news day today, huh? <laughs> it's been so long since we've seen holy cow! Well, to be fair, he was in the Star Wars episode, and he was also in the Trans Meat episode, but... Hey, holy cow, has anyone ever told you that you're utterly impossible? <laughs> Wait, 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 oh! I got this one, get this one. He offended holy cow! That never happens. Holy cow is like the most, he's the most even keel, chill guy. You gotta be really rude to offend holy cow. Holy shit, stop being cow racist. What do you call a two-legged cow? Lean <laughs> <Queen> beef. <laughs> I got more, I got more. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. <laughs> What did the mama cow say to baby cow? It's past your bedtime. <laughs> oh. You know what? I'm stopping though. I'm stopping. I'm glad you asked me that, holy cow. I just happened to have two dollars and two quarters right here in my wallet. I was afraid they'd be there till Saturday. So here's what. Can you cook me up one of those Philly cheese sticks over there? Sprinkle a little cheese over it, salt and pepper. Throw it right there in the microwave, toast it up for me. You can do that for me, can't you, holy cow? You're not too busy, are you? <laughs> oh, you can hear them saying moo in the background. Oh, that's upsetting. This is so weird. The, the long moo conversations, I like it, but I also kind of hate it. It's weird. It's also very weird to hear them emulating the moo for the purpose of the scene, but leaving the audio in. Also, I'm confused. Are they not allowed in the Vega Mart anymore? Like, have we seen them go to the Vega Mart at all this season? Can anybody remember? Did they get kicked out of Vega Mart? Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Look, look, look. Wait, 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 where, where's my steak? Where's my Philly cheesesteak? this couch this is that you this is the type of couch that you get scabies on okay right now this guy has got mites tunneling into his skin hey Dan, Dan. what 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 I'm awake I'm awake oh I'm starving it must be Saturday it must be Saturday right uh Dan you've been out for quite a while Saturdays Come and gone. Yeah, well, you know, no matter. It doesn't matter. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, that's just that's just fine. I can 
finally have my Philly cheesesteak. Um, Dan, what? It's, it's, it's been a week. What, what? It's been a week? What? 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 what do you mean it's been a week? Is it, it's, what, what day is it? No! <laughs> what? I'm waiting till Saturday. What are you doing with my astronaut helmet? <laughs> this should be 5k a month in New York City. <laughs> All right, that was an amazing episode. I'm so happy we went back to watch that one. I don't know how I could have ever lived without having somebody go, no, because that's how people say no. I know every time I don't get to eat what I want, I look directly at the camera and go, no. All right, that was great. That was legendary, okay? I'm so ready. Are you all ready for the next episode? Are you ready for one rule for Lent? Okay, you guys are going to have to help me. What is this a reference to? All of their episodes this season have been a reference to something else. But what is this a reference to? One rule for... Is there a movie that's called One Rule for Something? 12 rule. It can't be 12 rules for life, right? Oh, is it a Jordan Peterson reference? Is it? Oh, you might be right. That's weird. It's been all film references. It's got to be. You're probably right. It probably is 12 Rules for Life. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, you guys ready for the retreat at sea? Yes. I hope the holy man... Are they, do are they going on the Scientology sea mission? The retreat at sea? Uh-oh. Mackerel doesn't cause any problems this time. I guess he's not here today. No, he's not here today. Because we're leaving. Yeah. Oh my god, wait. Is this going to be a... Is this going to be another road trip episode? All right, let's find out. It is. No, I ain't sitting in that baby seat. actually going on a cru on a cruise. Brian. Yeah, we don't have work for several hours. Uh come down to my room. I got the Nintendo hooked up. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay, yeah. 626. Come on down. <sighs> Alrighty. This Final good. destination. It's the only level to play. You know what that means. I'm going to have to be Fox. There's going to be wave dashing. There's going to be L canceling. I hope you're ready. I'll be ready because, you know what? I got Kirby. Kirby! He has the best specials in the game. Top tier. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? You should use only specials. They're his strongest moves. I pretty much do anyway. I'm actually impressed. Now, I'm not going to lie. This cruise looks like a cheap motel but as far as i can tell they're actually on a cruise now i don't know what fucking cruise line they're on that has 
fucked up carpets like this, dirty, uh, like 70s, uh, you know, decor. What am I, why can't I find the word? I'm transfixed right now. Weird, ancient lawn chairs. All right, let's find out. One, go! Also, I can steal your abilities. My pointless laser gun. Whatever. Oh, uh, I'm really sorry. I gotta pause it, but I, for I almost forgot something. Yes, room service, please. Oh, yep, that's Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. He just pulled out the Jordan Peterson book. Yeah, I would like uh, one large side of bacon and a large side of sausage, please. Yes. I'm sorry. What the hell was that? Can you see? Watch in the background. And a large side of sausage, please. Yes, breakfast sausage. One large side of bacon. It's obviously and a an large effect. side of sausage. Nothing bacon. actually jumped out because it's staying stationary while the rest of the water is moving. But I'm impressed. Please. Yes, breakfast sausage. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, God bless. Not to be a downer, but I've been reading this new book called One Rule for Lent. Okay, it definitely, look at that, holy B macro. Okay, it's definitely a reference to Jordan Peterson, but that is extremely funny. The antidote for paganism, huh? That seems a little extreme. It definitely, I'm pretty sure it was actually a copy of 12 Rules for Life before. Maybe it wasn't, maybe they had this on, but it, I don't know, maybe it's just another book. I don't know, I swear. Hmm. Still. And according to this guy, that might not be a very good idea. Yeah, well, you see, we're on a luxury cruise here, filled with many luxurious things, and we should accept gifts from God, even if they are. Oh, it's Holy Mac in the water. I now understand. It got closer. I thought they were just fucking around with the background, but it's actually, it's, it, did you just see that? Watch. It's actually Holy Mac. Look, you can see the shape of him. Accept gifts from God, even if they are luxurious. You know what, I'm gonna stop you right there and see if there's a chapter on excuses. There is, and it says, no excuses. Yeah, you know. It, it, oh wait, it, it also says blub, 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 but I can't translate. <laughs> you know, it, this guy writes something, not even in English. It's just <laughs> one sorry, guy I love with that. one rule. I mean, it's just. Hold on, did you hear that? Yeah. It sounded like a whale. Is there a whale sighting? There's no whales out here. It sounded like a mackerel. <laughs> mackerel? Huh. Yeah, my, my grandpa Earl had a mackerel farm. They have a particular splash sound. Like, if you're around them all the time, you can pick up on it. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't know about Actually that because mackerels hate golf. Golf? Like, you mean the Gulf of Mexico? No, oh, no, oh, they have Papa in the top deck. Oh. Well, we're safe then. Shakes thing. That's 
just, that's just, that's just wholesome. It's a senior cruise. That's why they went on a senior cruise. That's why every, oh, it really is the discount one. All cruises are senior cruises? That's not true. All cruises are not all senior cruises. There are, like, seniors do tend to favor cruises. It's true. There's always a high senior population on every cruise, but they are. Ab it is absolutely not true that all cruises are senior cruises. Senior cruises avoid fam- are not, like, they're mutually exclusive with family cruises, okay? Because old people- like cannot hang around with the with the, the the young kids and the young kids will not have fun and will drive their parents crazy if they're given old people activity. They're like literally mutually exclusive. Some old people will go on family cruises and those family cruises and they'll have a fine time because they're okay with children. But children cannot go on a senior cruise without losing their minds and the and also will drive their parents crazy. This is a senior cruise. When there was not a child in sight, and every person in that shot, with the exception of Holy Mackerel, was like 60 plus. Some of those, some of the people in that shot looked like they were in their like 80s. Oh, this guy was not having it. This guy is done with their shit, okay? Oh, hi, Hubble Man Girl. Look at this guy. He looks like he's about to fucking kill this guy. He, he looks like he's about to try and kill Holy Mac. Looks directly at the camera with extreme anger. Ima imagine being at your fucking day job and Holy Mac shows up. It would be the greatest day at my day job in my entire life. I'm at my day job right now and Holy Mac has shown up and it's the best day of my life. Okay, we're going to play a game. I want to see, we're going to play a game called spot the under 60. Okay. If, if we can spot a single person under 60, that isn't one of the Holy Mac crew members, then Holy Mackerel wins. If we don't, then we win. Let's see it. The two people playing basketball. I think they came with the Holy Mac crew. I, I'm just going to make a prediction. I think those people came with the Holy Mac crew. That's why they were playing basketball with them. That's all I'm going to say. We can, we, can, they, we can give them that if we want to assume that. But I think those are ch church militant people with the, with, the, uh, with the Holy Mac crew. It's a pleasure to meet you. Not under 60. I haven't seen you in a long time. You're not looking too good today, though. What's up? It's so I don't read loud. The Crooners Bar? Oh, this is a senior cruise for sure. The Crooners Bar. 
That's not even a word that young people would know. The only reason I know it is because of the fucking joke from, uh, from, I think you should leave. The, 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 the drive-in crooner. The fuck is a crooner? Exactly. This is like, this is like ancient Egypt level ancient. It's boomer, it's boomer slang. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. People under 60 don't say crooners. People under 60 haven't heard the word crooner. Unless they watch, I think you should leave. I'm crooning! Over 60, over 60. Oh yeah, sorry, I should refine the rules. Workers don't count, obviously. Oh, we got an under 60. Wait, are they? Yeah. Oh, I can't actually tell. This might be so, ooh, they look under 60. They have a lanyard, are they with the crew? Are they with the crew? Oh, we might, they might've won. They might've won. Let's check the rest of the room. Over 60, over 60. Probably might be under 60. Over 60. Oh, gray hair, gray hair, gray hair, gray hair. Can't tell. Can't tell. Gray hair, gray hair. Gray hair, can't tell. Gray hair. Ooh, might be under 60. Gray hair, white hair. In fact, there's a lot of white hair in here too. Like pure white. Ooh. Why would they have lanyards? Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, they have lanyards too. So maybe that okay. So I think I think Holy Mac wins. Technically, there's somebody under sixty on this. You got Sam. You got Sam. One. <laughs> Good strength. <laughs> oh wait, but he's heckling. Wait, he's heckling this person about eating meat, which means they're probably with the church militant people, because otherwise, how would they know, right? Still. We'll give him the point, because we're nice and we're charitable. Holy Mac is winning. <laughs> oh! An under 60! An under 60! Wait, this is Christine. Wait, is that Niles? <laughs> oh, don't worry. It is, never mind. Nope, these people don't count. This is Niles. This is Niles and her family. Nope, don't count. They only have one point. That means the last table was almost assuredly also uh, church militant members. The lanyards identify them. Point removed. We've officially confirmed those are church militant people. This is still a senior cruise. We have not seen a single non-church militant person under the age of 60. Point deducted. We're getting close to the end of the episode. Do you think we're going to see anybody who's not an employee of Church Militant or an employee of the cruise who's under 60 yet? Ryan, the bacon and uh, breakfast sausage arrived. Nope. Come on. Doesn't it smell good? Don't want any. Mmm. But, you know, it's luxurious, isn't it? Luxurious, delicious bacon. Yeah. Don't want it. Fine. Guess I'll just have more for myself. Knock yourself out. He's got no sympathy for your pathetic meat eating tendencies. God, that's such a good line. That's such a sick line. Finger gun. New technique. Innovative. 
Also, I love the I love the Kraken tie. I didn't notice that until just now. But he's got a he's got a tie that's got a Kraken on it. It's got tentacles. That's sick as hell. Hey, wait! Sign my book! Yep, that's confirmation. That was the Niles family. The people who they saw were the Niles family. Oh, man. what I call crooning. Okay, excellent ending. Pitching a burger into the sea. Perfect ending to an episode. Perfect. I, I'm not going to lie. Um, I can't believe that they actually put that rendition of that song into the video. Like, I don't, I'm not trying to be a hater, but that was just, wow. That was, it was, that was, like, that took off key to, like, a, a new galaxy. That was, it was painful on the ears. That was, like, like, I've heard significantly drunk, uh, uh, you know, people fucking singing at a bar better than that. Drunk karaoke at, at the dive bar is better than that. Retreat at Sea is back. Additional space now available. Retreat at Sea for our ninth year. Starts in Galveston, Texas. Goes to Mexico. Then Honduras. Then Mexico again. Then back to Galveston. Wait, so... It's an eight-day cruise? Oh, it's technically a seven-day cruise because you leave late on the on the first day. Ooh, that's brutal. Seven days at sea? $990 per person for the group rate? That's crazy! Holy shit, that's nuts! That's insane! That's ridiculous. No, no, cruises are not that expensive. I'm so sorry. That's fucking crazy. That's more than like a yeah, that's more than like a Disney cruise. That's crazy. That's absurd. Look at this shit. The full payment to Princess Cruises plus St. Michael's Media. Oh my god.
That's insane. Ocean view is 1,200. Standard balcony, 1,400. 1,600 per person. That's, and we saw the interior of those rooms. They looked like hell. Oh my dear God. No, that's not. The 300 is additional. This is the cost for just the fares. Then they charge another 300 for the benefit of going to all of the church militant special events. Also, they killed every person on there. There are no requirements for masks, jabs, or pre-cruise testing. They killed every old person on there. All of those old people that we witnessed in that video are now dead. Wow, that is a... Uh... Wow, I can't believe we got to see their last moments via an episode of Holy Mackerel. <laughs> Imagine that being the last the last thing that you contribute to the planet is appearing like as like a like a like like a doddering old person in the background of Holy Mackerel episode. <laughs> oh, oh, the potato, the cream potatoes. I went to the crooner's bar and the cream croon the creamed potatoes were fucking terrible. They were too warm and too cold at the same time. And they didn't have any salt in it. Oh, that's... Oh, God. That is absurd. Okay, real quick. I just want to do this real quick. Hold on. I just want to look just to see what, like, a, 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 a similar mid-range... Uh, let's see. Let's see. From... Where do we want to go from? Let's say, let's say we'll go from somewhere popular, okay? No, you know what? We'll go from the same place. We'll go from Galveston, Texas, okay? Okay, right now, hold on. Let's look at a seven-day cruise, okay? Six-day cruise. Currently, right now, on Carnival, which is a comparable cruise line to the one that they're on, okay? From Galveston, Texas, okay? 459 per person for a six day cruise to the same locations, actually literally the exact same locations, Costa Maya, Mahogany Bay, then Cozumel, 459. They charged $990 for that cruise plus the fees to church militant. I told you that's ridiculous. That's cheaper than a hotel stay? Yeah. The cruises are like are like fairly cheap now because the cruise industry has like crashed ridiculously. But also they're never really that expensive for a mid-range cruise. But cruises are um listen. The going on a cruise cruise ships are a weird experience, okay? It's an it's a very strange experience, okay? Yeah, 200% markup for the cultist cruise. For a shitty room that looks like it hasn't been, re like, you know, re redone since the 70s. I went on a cruise. My parents took me on a cruise when I was... How old was I? Maybe 15? And... Uh, I, I don't think I would, I don't think I ever want to go on another cruise again. Like I didn't have a bad time. I actually had a pretty decent time, um, overall, but like looking back on it, I'm like, I would have been going crazy by the end of it, especially in like a post COVID world, you know, where it's just like, there's still so much COVID going around. Like. The, the, you're in tight quarters. Like, the entire thing is crammed with people, okay? Most of the activities involve sitting in a restaurant. That is what you are going to do, like, 
a solid 60% of the time that you're on a cruise. You'll be sitting in a restaurant for breakfast, you'll be sitting in a restaurant for lunch, you'll be sitting in a restaurant for dinner, and you'll be sitting in a bar and or restaurant for most of the time in between listening to a show or drinking, okay? Most of what people do on cruises is just drink the entire time. They just drink fuckloads of alcohol. Um, and then there's like extremely boring mini golf, extremely boring basic sports activities, um, and a bunch of shops that sell garbage. That's basically the cruise experience. The most fun is the excursions, but the excursions are giga tourist, okay? I mean, like, your hand is held, your schedule is made 100%, and you are brought to locations that are usually completely subsidized by cruise ship companies. So, like, you will go to a country, and you'll go to the company town equivalent. Like, if you go to Jamaica, like, they take you to the, to the like, cruise town where all the cruises go and all the businesses are like connected to the cruises. You don't actually see like the real Jamaica. You just see cruise town. It's fucking weird. Okay. It's a weird experience. Anyway, enough about cruises. Let's move to a better episode. This is mission impious mission impious. Oh, this is looking like it's going to be golden already. Okay. This is like, this looks like it's going to be amazing. Let's do it. Oh, actually, if you've been enjoying this holy mackerel mega episode, then make sure that you hit like and subscribe down below. This is fun. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta admit it's been fun as hell. Right? Right? Mission Impious. Yeah, Mission Impious. Let's do it. They got a curing. Oh, hey, Adrian. Hey, Charlie, what's up? Oh, there it is. There, this is the, okay, so maybe, maybe this has always been busted. Or maybe it's been busted for more than a couple episodes. I just couldn't see there was a second microwave here. Whatever, let's Not much. How's it going? Good. good. So last night, went on a date. Ooh. Steakhouse downtown. Yeah. Fantastic place. This is what's in here. It's a premium filet mignon. So waitress messed up my order. I got two steaks for the price of one. Really? They didn't charge you for both? No. No, waitress messed up. Brought out the first steak, packed uh -oh. the other one. That's what I got here. Bad start. Bad start, my man. Terrible beginning. I mean, oh, check, no. Check this out. Whoa. It's fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry. Another bored person said, do you remember the first major American media event over COVID was on a cruise ship? Oh, yeah, that's true. It was. I didn't remember that until you mentioned it now. Sorry for not for missing your um, your super chat. Thank you so much for the five dollars. Deeply appreciate it. Yeah, the cruise industry got destroyed because if you went on a cruise during the pandemic, you were basically asking to die. Like, imagine, imagine getting extremely sick at sea just long enough that you could bounce back only to get sick from a separate variant that's also circling on there. Imagine your lungs getting shredded by viral glass two times in a row and you can't do anything but sit in your dark room on the cruise. Horrible. Anyway, whatever. Let's continue. That fantastic. is fantastic. And that's like only $25 a steak. It's fantastic. Fantastic. So anyway, I know it's Friday, but come on. You can't wait any longer for the steak. It's been already 16 hours. I got to have it right now. I got to have it today at least. I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I know it's Friday, but come on. It's quality steak. Premium stuff. Can I wait any longer? Filet mignon is premium, but you know, I made that mistake myself and I, you know, it just doesn't cut it, man. But you know what? To each their own. It's crazy. Usually Charlie, it seems Charlie learned his lesson on the cruise, right? Whoa, holy mackerel, how's it going? Um, I'm totally kidding all about that. That was just a joke of, you know, Charlie and I just mess around a little bit. You know, it's Friday. 
I know I can't eat any meat on Friday, but you know, it was a supreme mistake. I'm gonna put it away for later. Uh, you know, this filet mignon, it was, you know, I, I got it yesterday. It's it's very, uh, it's, it's still fresh. You know, I was, well, I was gonna wait till tomorrow, you know, uh, to eat this. <laughs> the note saying Friday's lunch is awesome. This note here is, is nothing, it's nothing. Just uh, uh, says Friday, but left. doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Just a doodle, all right? Anyway, please, you know, you know, let me let me just put this in the fridge. It's it's very expensive because obviously tomorrow is okay. Please be very careful with that steak. Filet mignon, fantastic cut of meat. I would really love to enjoy it later. Obviously not today. Maybe tomorrow. Please just, let me just put it away in the in the in, in the refrigerator because of, oh you're taking it with you and come on. Listen, I got to give them credit. Wherever they source their stomach grumbling noises are next level gross out stuff, okay? That's like, it's, it's, you know, it's something. It doesn't sound like a wet fart. It sounds like an internal wound. It sounds like they, like, like, like they got like a, a, a diverticulitis that popped. Not Metal Gear Solid! Yes! This was me last night completely bungling the first mission of Metal Gear Solid 2 over and over and over again! Hands on your hips! Hands on your head! Do the Macarena! Adrian! 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 Anime titties poster. Stick your anime titties poster on it. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's uh, nothing. Are you sure? It's definitely safe here. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna check the uh, I'm gonna check the premises. All right, I'll I'll come with you. Upgraded. Adrian, they've upgraded the security. Those, what you see over there, are infrared sensors. If you trigger them, they'll detonate, blowing up the entirety of St. Michael's media and causing you to sin on about a thousand different counts. Ah, what do you mean? You mean if I want to get my burger, I'm gonna have to find a way to disable infrared? Hmm. I wonder if there's any fire extinguishers I can shoot to see where the lasers are.
I need them to have a giant monologue about uh about genetics and how your genetics don't uh don't decide who you are. I need that to happen like ASAP. <laughs> Naomi calls in. Adrian, I'm a geneticist. I know that our genes are our destiny. It's in your genes that you wish to consume a burger, or sorry, a filet mignon, even on, even on Lent, or on Friday during Lent. <clears throat> You're saying that it's written into my genes that I have to eat this steak? I guess I have no choice then. <clears throat> Campbell calls in. Hmm, I've never been much of a proponent of gene theory myself. I tend to think that a true warrior is able to choose for the future. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I don't have to eat the steak. Maybe I can choose piousness instead. Okay, the only the only unrealistic part of this so far is that he hasn't accidentally stepped on a mine and blown himself up triggering a game over screen. I need that. I need that. The most realistic thing is when you just go boop, and the entire screen blows up. You blow out your speakers and the the end the game over screen pops up, and then you hear the snake, snake. to the steakhouse, water filet, get a to-go box. Huh, that's the last time I'll be trusting you about getting steak on Thursday. Otakon calls in, well, s snake. I didn't know that they were going to give you two. You don't got to be so hard. Why do you got to bust my chops so hard? Uh, I'm not busting your chops. This is nothing. In the real military, they'd never stop giving you an end of your troubles. Natasha calls in, Snake, this is a bungee cord. This will allow you to bungee down from the ceiling. Press the action button to bounce off the wall and use your control stick to swing from left to right. It's fairly simple and should keep you safe. Advanced technology reinforces your spine. So you have little worry for injury. However, as a side effect, the rope is now a part of your spine. Snake! Press the B button! I know what canned fish feels like. I don't know what who feels like?
canned fish. I thought he said Ken Fish. And when I searched Ken Fish, it came up as a Christian guy. But, like, he appears to be a, uh, yeah, he's an evangelical. So that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Canned Fish. Okay, okay, I get it. I, I searched Ken Fish and a Christian guy came up. So I was like, uh... <laughs> locker oh yeah they sold these things they sold these bobbleheads for like a hundred and fifty dollars when they when they announced that there that there was going to be a um a holy mackerel bobble headline. I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. Maybe I'll get one. As long as it's not too much money that's going to go to uh, Church Militant. And sure enough, it's like $150 for the bobblehead. I'm like, nope, not happening. There's no way. I know that that, must, that means that Church Militant must be taking a gigantic cut. Hey, hey everyone, uh, it's Adrian here. Um, just wanted to kind of brief on the episode. I, I, you know, I, I thought, I thought, you know, it was all gonna be worth it at the end, and honestly, it wasn't. Uh, totally not worth all the effort. Clams in the face and all that. It's outside of that. I, I should have never. I should have never made the effort to try to get the thing. Holy mackerel was right. And honestly, if I, I would have had, I wish I would have had the bobblehead. I wish I had a bobblehead before all that effort. So yeah, you know, it'll be helpful like if I, you know, if I would have took, if I would have taken the bobblehead with me on the date, you know, it'd be really helpful. And honestly, you know, if it would have helped me, would have helped me is, realize that, you know, what is this? I could have either saved it or just, I could have eaten both of those steaks on Thursday, went to, went to bed happy and, 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 and full of, of steak. Anyway, um, so yeah, you know, if you ever, if you ever like, if you ever like, wanting to you know break the fast you know get yourself a bobblehead it is like limited edition holy mackerel will why did they use this read what is this line read this is bad this is bad this is like bad even for them sign it you know it's a nice reminder that um you know we, we need a fast and no matter how premium or prime that you know filet is it's you know just fast not worth it anyway again limited edition get yourself some they're they're going fast really they're really going fast so don't waste any time get one get two get four of them get one for your friends and neighbors and your mom all right you don't need to climb through a vent you don't need to you know hang from wires and you know try to outsmart the mackerel you can't you can't outsmart the mackerel. Wow. Look, I was feeling bad about stumbling over my words tonight because I intentionally stayed up too late playing Metal Gear Solid 2 last night before I knew that I was going to have to stream today. And so I've been stumbling over my words because I'm overtired. But that... That was something else. At least I have the live streamer and the Metal Gear Solid 2 playing excuse. That was a choice. That was definitely a choice. But now everybody. But now everybody. It's time. Join me. In silence.
and stop the silence! That's right. This moment of time frozen forever. And by that I mean for approximately 10 seconds more while I announce the next and final currently existing episode of Holy Mackerel, which may prove to be the last episode of Holy Mackerel ever made. And we are about to enjoy it together. The studio. A riff off the office, but Holy Mackerel style. Are we ready? Are we fucking ready? I'm ready, let's do it. Is that thing it's a 20 minute Holy Mackerel episode. Everybody, this could either be the worst episode of the season or the best episode that's ever been made. 20 minute Holy Mackerel episodes are always a massive, massive grab bag. Like, most of the 20 minute holy mackerel episodes have been god awful okay they've just been unfunny rambly mostly like confusing and lots of dead air but every once in a while you get a quality cooking or you get a um what's the one where they argue about writing that i always forget the title of that episode the one where there are the meta episode where they were roasting us for being critics of the show and they totally got us <sighs> hydrate if you need to after multiple years of watching it together we wrap maybe forever Maybe not. With a nearly 20 minute episode of Holy Mackerel. Let's do it! Thing on? Yeah? Okay. All right, here we go. Hi, welcome to the brand new Holy Mackerel documentary where we're gonna have a whole lot of fun. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to 2023 where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Just use one of those two, okay? Yeah, both are good. All right, Charlie, enough with the YouTube act. You know, why don't you tell people something useful like how to milk a goat or self-defense against bears? Yeah. There is no defense. Oh, so JD is Dwight. You know, that's a really, really good idea. We could do something like uh, homesteading, you know, something useful. Oh, uh, yeah, like, Everything's up a billion percent nowadays, you know, Biden economics. So uh, we here at Church Militant have been uh, doing a lot to save money, like a hundred things. No new camera equipment. sure it was the Bidenomics and not the Vorisnomics? You sure it was the Bidenomics and not the bouncing on your boy's dickonomics? Power saving lights, 98 other things. You know what? It's about time. We have been too- Of course I watch Eric. Of course I fucking watch Eric, but, uh, but uh, it just fit too perfectly. That's literally- at this point, we know, at this point in time, when they're complaining about Bidenomics and having to cut costs, we know that or somewhere around this point, Michael Voris was sending dick pics to his own donors, who then complained and stopped donating to Church Militant. And yes, of course I watch internet comment etiquette. He's a fucking god. He's one of the funniest people ever comfortable for too long. Yeah, I've already been making my own toothpaste, my own soap. I've stopped showering. Uh, no one told you to do that, JP. <sighs> well, these cuts we're making, unfortunately, they're not enough. So, I need to be the bearer of bad news. <sighs> we have to cut our Adobe software. Editing software? Uh-oh. Oh, is this good? No, okay. They can't do this episode. 
No, they've already done a cut. Are they just saying they're barely going to edit this episode? Okay. It's just oh too expensive. So I just wish there was a way to talk about this bad news in a good way. Like something like, yeah, that's not good, but I feel good about it. You know, it might be difficult to not use our editing software, but I don't feel like yelling at Charlie over this. And he made the right decision. Hmm. What? Oh. <laughs> Who's that? He made the right decision. Hmm. What? New character? New character? Oh, <laughs> by the way, we're carpooling to save money. Uh, guys, please do not say anything about this to anyone else. You got it, boss. Uh, Charlie, Shane is texting everybody. Hey, stop texting everybody. Unsend that. Okay, got it, boss. And it's unsent. Okay, I'm sorry to pause right now for such a random reason, but is it just me? Or maybe, maybe it is just me, but does anybody else get like a constant sense of unease whenever there's a car scene in any movie ever like i could it can even be in a movie that i know it can be in a thing where i know that that i know for a fact they're not going to do a car crash scene in holy mackerel but i swear to god every single time there's a car camera in the car in a movie i'm literally on edge because i I, like, anticipate another car smashing into it. And it is even worse when he's, like, looking around all over the place. I'm like, they're going to get T-boned. What? How did you do that? graphics without Adobe. Practical effects. I have a question. It sounds like it's going to be really, really bad. Not a legitimate question. Low budget aesthetic is trending. It's oh, posh. It doesn't make any sense. Correct. We can't make the Posh. I think that's the wrong word there. This is wild, actually. Th this being the storyline is really funny, given that we've what we've been talking about leading up to this. Oh. Uh, is that correct? Oh, why would he read it? Read That went not how I wanted it to go. But you know what? I'm not hiding. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to face the angry mob. And at the end of the day, we're going to get all of our work done. And we'll all be friends. In this season, they have had... In this season is... Remember, this is the same season that they had the episode where there's hidden secret meat in Michael Voris's office where Milo Yiannopoulos talks directly into the camera about being Michael Voris's little special helper and then he gets, he gets defeated by a pussy attacking him. Literally. And now they have another, they have the ending episode of the season being about a guy having to face the music as his company go, as his company goes under. Friends again. <laughs> In a minute.
Did you try turning it on and off again? You know, I didn't. Maybe I should. Hayes is going to probably try to incense it. Yeah, he probably will. But I don't know that's going to help because it's saying the ink drum is broken and I just replaced it yesterday. Well, I'm going to get some coffee. Want to take a break? Sure. Probably need it. Where's that tea? We need them anyway. Today has been a great day. We should have canceled Adobe a long time ago. We should cancel out the free applications too. I'd have a lot less to worry about. Hey, Charlie. No, no, I don't work on typewriters. Typewriters aren't even technology. Sherry, how is this not technology? I need the typewriter to make tear out quotes. Production team, control room meeting, five minutes. All right. Charlie. <laughs> okay, just having him randomly do a gym stare for literally no reason is very, very holy Mac. I love it. I love it. Like, just it makes no quick. sense. What, uh, maybe you should tell me your announcement first, just because I'm your number two and all that. JP, don't worry about it. This this is just a little thing. No, 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 I know. But just just tell me so I can tell them. Here, just, just whisper it into my ear. All right, everyone. Okay, everyone, pay attention. Charlie, you have the floor. Uh, I really didn't want to have to do this. I tried everything I could, but we're going to have to use MS Paint. Oh. 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 Please, please, please. It's simple. All you have to do is import all of the stuff that you made in Photoshop back when we had that into MS Paint. It's that simple, guys. And you know what? Ooh, I have thanks. a trick. Wait, it's Friday Power Potion Heather. I should put it away. Oh. Shift click, you can create straight lines in MS Paint. Gone are the days of those childish art pieces that you don't want to put on your refrigerator. Now you can make quasi-professional looking graphics in MS Paint. So, Guys, look, if those Australians can do it for their cartoon show, I think that church militant employees, we, we should be able and, and proud to use Microsoft Paint. Good job, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, I like that attitude. I like that attitude right there. And so, you're going to need to get these programs. Uh, you're going to need Movie Maker, because you're going to need to import frame-by-frame -frame graphics into Movie Maker if you want to do motion graphics. It's just really simple, guys, okay? So I think we're ready to tackle the day. I think we're gonna have a great show tonight. All right, guys? Yeah, let's go, let's do it! Okay, yeah. yes, everyone, good meeting. Uh, get back to work now. Yes, thank you. Yep. You're now welcome, JP. That went well. I think so, too. We're going back to the early aughts and we're using Microsoft Paint. CNN's not using Microsoft Paint, I'll tell you that. Fox News isn't using Microsoft Paint. This is, this is a self-parody. I don't know if they intended this that way, but putting their own headline as Bishop does bad thing is like the biggest church militant self-parody you could come up with ever. I'm sure they're trying to be like, oh, it's cheap, but this is just make generally making fun of their channel. This is what they do. They just churn out Bishop Does Bad Thing content. So we're nothing if not trailblazers here at St. Mike's. Nobody mentioned the teleprompter. No, nobody thinks of the teleprompter. Nobody thinks of the teleprompter software. I got to write these cue cards all by myself. I mean, this place would burn down without me. Dave, what are you doing? Making cue cards. We didn't, we didn't replace the prompter software. The prompter software is free. We don't need to replace... What you made? Leftover pizza. Pepperoni pizza. Hey, put in 1337. These guys are such nerds. It's kind of sad. This 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 season has been kind of sad watching like everything slowly break down and not work.
And now they're now they're having an episode where they're like having to close down everything in the office because of Bidenomics. No, Shane, because I'm not an idiot. It's Friday and it's Lent. We all know what would happen. Change to 55 seconds, what? Hey Shane, did you move my bacon? Nope. Oh, come on. I know you gotta do this, but it wasn't my fault. Shane! Oh, come on, that's, that's not even creative. Okay, fine, you got me. Can we call a truce, please? Oh, Shane, I would... <laughs> I like that he just threw them on the... He threw the extra meats on the floor. Excellent detail. Okay, fine, you got me. Can Pick we call a truce, please? Chucks it on the oh, floor. <laughs> Shane, I would love to, but as a deputy canon 1251 enforcer, I can't. That would be a dereliction of duty. Well, that's really too bad, because I was looking forward to um, assisting you. Absolutely not interested. Continue. I'm pretty certain Holy Mackerel doesn't know about our remote editing. Think he's eating meat? If he did, who would catch him? It's the perfect cover. All right, leave him to me. Wait. You'll need this. I don't need your help. Give me. I don't really have any sort of plan. I just want to get JP off of my back, but wow. He's really, really getting into it. I hope this doesn't come back to bite me. I know he's up to something, but I just can't prove it. Uh, if you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. I'm, I'm actually really confused as to what's going on here. So he put the meat in there to try and frame. To, was he trying to get JP fired? And then now JP and him are trying to get the remote editor fired? Hello, yes, I'd like to order a medium pepperoni pizza, please. No, make that a small. Yes, the address is 543. Was it necessary to frame Alex? No, of course not, but I won't be thwarted. Papa always said, finish what you start. Well, Dad, look at me now. At first, I thought there'd be no way we could get evening news done without Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere. And I really thought the production team would hate me. But you know what? You can get pretty much anything done if you're desperate enough. And with as much work as there is to go around, there's no time for anyone to be mad. I'm glad it has texture, but it doesn't move. I need it to move. We talked about this earlier. It's gonna have to move. Well, it, it can't really move this because it's MS Paint. Like, we normally use After Effects for that, but, you know, wait. Yeah, D Dilverin says, uh, uh, I think they skipped a page in the script. Yeah, I feel like they did too. I don't understand what he was trying to do. He was trying to frame the remote editor, but for why? For, wait, why though? Like, I, I don't know. I'm confused. I'm really confused. I might have an idea. If, if we print this out, hold that thought. Wait. Normally I would use After Effects to do these quote graphics. I'd screenshot the web page, highlight the text, but this is kind of the same. I've actually made graphics like this before and nobody noticed. Excuse me. Oh, oh 
Oh man, this is a this episode is this episode is making fun of church militant a lot. Oh Jesus! Emily, Emily, please tell me you got that printer working. Uh, not yet. Why? Because I have an idea that's gonna get the show to work. We're gonna we're gonna have a show. How? This isn't even my job. I just wanted to print on my Holy Macro movie script. It's called Infinity War. <laughs> oh. Stop insensing it. You're making it worse. It worked. Oh, ye of little faith. Well, I guess my work is done here. Of course, now you work. You have this in the printer, Emily? Oh, yeah, I've been working on it. Holy mackerel finally rests watching the sun rise on a grateful world. The hardest choices require the strongest wills. That's nice. Oh, speak of Holy Miracle, have you seen him today? He's been elusive. Yeah, he's being sent by JP to various places. I may or may not have gotten him to be involved in a prank that I'm pulling. JP. Okay, it's really weird to have this guy be Jim when he obviously looks like BJ Novak's character. Um, what's his fucking name in the show? Why I always forget his name. Um, what's his name in the show? Ryan. Ryan. He's lit. He looks just like Ryan. Is look. He's Ryan. He should be playing Ryan. I may or may not have gotten him to be involved in a prank that I'm pulling. JP? You know yeah. how far he takes these things. What if somebody finds out? What if he ruins a show? He always takes things too far. I, look, I'm not concerned. I don't think anyone's going to know that I had anything to do with it. It'll be fine. Um... What are you doing? Enforcing Canon 1251. On them? They're fair game. None of those people work here. They're Catholic. Canon 1251 applies. <laughs> okay, that's actually amazing. Yes! Yes! I take it back! Do send the holy mackerel after them! I would love to see how Catholic the people at Daily Wire totally are. Oh, I bet I bet Matt Walsh and uh and uh, you know, chamber pot fucking Michael Knowles over there are, they're so, I bet they're so devout. Go, yes, go. JP, do not send Holy Mackerel after Matt Walsh. That is a terrible, just. No, that is the greatest idea I've ever heard. Perhaps the greatest idea ever put forward here. I would love Holy Mackerel to go after Matt Walsh. I hope he uses the tidal wave attack. Terrible idea. Shane, I have no choice. The man believes in aliens. Oh! What have I done? I never should have pranked JP. He's... He's unstoppable. Benedicta tu in mulieribus. Et benedictus fructus et resu Jesu. All right, Hunter. Five, four, three. Hello, and thank you for joining us this Friday, April 7th. I'm Hunter Bradford. In the Diocese of Scranton, church officials say they are shocked and dis. <laughs> Absolutely amazing, absolutely incredible graphic. Dismayed at the destruction of evidence in an ongoing fraud investigation, claiming that someone replaced all their highlighters with black markers. Dave, put those cards away. You're distracting Hunter. It's just in case you never know. And only Michael Voris. Mike? 
Thanks, Hunter. This absolutely smells rotten, as you might imagine, and it happened right after the bishop called an area FedEx store asking if they had paper shredders that work on magazines. To make this graphic on a phone. Yep. It's a lot better than I would do. Nice. Well, my guys, this is a very important story, but unfortunately we're running out of time. Uh, thank you again. When we come back, though, the German Bishops' Conference has started inventing new commandments because breaking the same old Ten Commandments over and over got too boring. Clear. And then we got the, what uh, is going on? What is this right. crap? Guys, wh why is my phone blowing up? What is this? I I'm really, really sorry, Mike. We we're doing the best we can given the circumstances, trying to have a successful show. Look, I'm not talking about the show. I'm talking about my phone. My phone's blowing up right now. I've got tweets from Matt Walsh, uh, Michael Knowles, Matt Frad, Freedom Tunes that are saying, hey, at Church Milton, I don't know why you sent your fish man to ruin my show, but he barged in and vaporized about $75 of food, and I'm very upset about it. What is this? So, so you're not upset about the graphics? No! I'm upset about this! <sighs> oh, well, hey. Listen. As a meta-commentary, this episode is great. As a comedy, there's been a few funny parts. But as a meta-commentary... Hey, you want to talk to marketing about it? Absolutely, get him down here. What's hey, Anthony! On? Did marketing hey, have something to do with this? What's going on? What did you do? Well, I'm asking if you guys did. What's going on? Why is my phone blowing up? What's going on here? Well, I can honestly say that it was Shane. He started it. Uh, Shane? Okay, yes, technically I did start it. I had Holy Mackerel ruin JP's lunch, and it, I guess, just went from there. It escalated. So you're telling me that all of this stuff that's going on all over social media started because of some crazy little childish prank? Not now, Mac. Not now, Mac. Anthony, we better not have lost subscribers over this. I mean, it seems we've already ticked off a bunch of big people. What, 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 so what? What's going on? The numbers are actually up by a lot. Uh, the site traffic is They're through up. the roof. Yes, absolutely. The site traffic is through the roof. Um, the context of those mentions didn't actually matter. They just got a lot of eyes on our site. So you're telling me this all is true. Oh my God. Holy shit. This is. They're killing him. They're killing him. Turning out good. Absolutely. Oh, well, that's a fish of a different color. Shane, attaboy. Matter of fact, you're promoted. But hey, no fair. Looks like uh, Holy Mackerel saved the day. <laughs> I love the, yes! Committing to the bid for the credits. Excellent. Once again, uh, he's an incredible guy. And uh, by the way, Turns out we're gonna get all of our programs back. You know, Premiere, After Effects, it, it's really, you know, best. It's best for us that we're gonna be able to do the work the way we're used to. And uh, speaking of the work we do, today was so busy, I didn't even have a chance to eat lunch. Looks like JP uh, got this for me. Um, I don't even know what it is, really. Some kind of a burrito. Golf ball? Oh, from the previous episode. It was the golf ball that he threw all the way back off of the cruise ship. He timed it so that when it hit J it would hit Charlie's fucking sandwich out of his hand. All the way from the cruise episode. everyone that's it that's the last episode of holy mackerel
And of course, like I said, there's a possibility that we get a new drop of Holy Mac episodes coming soon. Because I don't know, maybe they started filming the new episodes for this year immediately. But I've always got the feeling that they film them like pretty close to Lent because they always make jokes that are relevant to the time period of the Lent that they're posting in. So I don't feel like they film them in advance, at least not most of the time. Okay, everyone, the final send off. Okay, this is it, everybody. All right, everybody, hold on. We're going to play a song. By Sam Robson, okay? While we do a final send off, okay? Here we go. This is, a, this is the parting glass by Sam Robson. All the money. On the count of three, I want everybody to K Cosmonaut, okay? I'm gonna count down. And when I say go, I want you to type in the K Cosmonaut emote. So make sure your chat logs are cleared. Clear. I wanna see a huge combo. We still have 220 people here. This is for you, holy mackerel. We hope that you will return for Lent this year, but we know you might not. And in case you don't, Three, memory now two, I can't one, go, K Cosmonaut, go! To me the parting glass. Yes! Good if you love Holy Mackerel, K Cosmonaut, and chat now! With you of all the comrades. That air I've had, they are so 32? We can do better than that! Going away, and of all the sweethearts that air I've had, they would wish me one more. 36! I know it's late at night, but come on! But since it falls, no combo breakers, bring it in 37! More! I should rise and you should not. 37. It times out after a while. If nobody bumps. Good night and joy be with you. He made it past the atmosphere. Man may drink and not be drunk. A man may fight and not be slain. A man may court a pretty girl and perhaps be welcomed back again. But since it has started to be by a time to rise and a time to fall, come fill to me the Holy mackerel, it's been an honor. It's been a blessing. And to all the people who made Holy Mackerel. We don't see eye to eye on basically anything. But one thing we do see eye to eye on is the beauty of the canon law enforcer known as Holy Mackerel. And I want to say thank you for that. We love Holy Mackerel, and it's been an honor. Once again, that was The Parting Glass, covered by Sam Robson, the legend of Sam Robson.